So welcome back. So now that I've shown you a git init where we uh, initialize using uh, the terminal like we did in the last video, this time I'm going to do the git init from the GitHub desktop. And I might as well just tell you that the only difference is that we make a few more commands. And I'm going to just do it and then show you step by step the commands that the git init is running from the GitHub desktop client. So first, I just want to see the old directory just to see what's in there when we did a git init from um, our beautiful terminal. So how do we do that? Let me just say OK and add this repository. So here it is and just notice there's nothing in here. No files, no nothing and I can show you the same in the file explorer. If I go into the git there's nothing in here. So the git init from the terminal only added an empty repository with nothing in there. Now I'm going to do the same. Now I'm going to do a git init by pressing the add button again from the desktop and I'm going to go under create and under work I want a new one and let's just call it calculator2. Okay, so I'm going to add a second repository here called calculator2. I'm going to press OK. It took a bit of time because a lot more happened than the last time. So let's have a look. First of all, let's open the folder just to show you what's actually in there. Okay, not only did it create the folder for me, and add the .git folder. It also added two other files in here. I'll explain these to you later, but they're pretty much there to help Git ignore some files and know about some certain types of files. So that's why they're there and I'll get into details with these. But they're automatically added for you behind the scenes. So actually it did not just do a Git in it, it actually did a few more steps. But the file is here now, we have a few files, and if I press again the circle furthest to the right, you can see that there's no changes, but actually we created the git repository and added these two files. Good. Let's see how that would actually be if we did a clean git init in the terminal and what steps it actually took for us. So step one, I'm going to just go in and destroy this as a git repository. So I'm just going to remove this. Done. Step two, I'm going to, in the terminal, go into the calculator it doesn't know it's a git repository anymore because I just removed the .git folder. Remember that. The .git folder is the memory of the history of everything we have. So it's gone now. So it doesn't know it's a git repository. So what does it do? First it does a git init like this. Now it has the repository. It knows it's a .git folder and as you can see here the .git folder is back. The next thing it does is it pulls out two files from somewhere in the cloud or somewhere inside git and pastes those two in here like this. I just copied them from the other project, it finds them somewhere else, I don't care, it puts in these two files for me. So, now it's actually there, but if I look at my calculator here, they're not committed yet. They're not added to the Git repository, it just knows that they exist. So the next step that it does is it pushes them, it stages them, that's the name of it, it stages them to the Git repository, meaning I want to add these on the next commit. It can do that in different ways. I'm just going to do a git add and then a dot, meaning that I want to state them. Let's just have a status before that. Status is the command you can use in the terminal just to get an understanding of what's missing, what's going on, what have I changed. And right now it says there are two untracked files and you can add them by doing git add and then the name of the file. Or if you want to add them all, you can do a git dot. Git add dot. Okay, now they are all added. And you'll see that in the terminal because it says plus two green ones, meaning that they are ready to be committed. Okay, let's go back to the terminal just to show you that they are here already. Good. Let's do a git commit and give a message of init. Just meaning that I've added them. And the dash m means I want to give you a message. The commit means I want to now tell the local repository that I just added some new files. To explain this to you, let's go into the calculator too. This is actually what that means. Now this guy is its own little version of the code. And in that own little version, you'll see exactly what was added, changed, deleted. And then this is the current version that I'm working with right now and there are no changes. But right now, if I look at the other one, the calculator, the only version here is actually the one that hasn't been changed at all. Okay, let's try and do this commit now. That was the second step it did. Now they are committed, and if I go back to the command here, now you'll see there are actually two steps for both 
calculator two and calculator one. So if I go back to the first step, it'll do show you exactly the same that it did for the other one. So that was the two steps it did when we used the desktop client to do this in it. If you use the terminal or desktop client, it doesn't matter, it's up to you, but that's the steps it does. Okay, see you in the next videos.